watch it all. See you next time. <laughs> I totally messed it up. <laughs>book nerds out there who have not read your masterpieces what <laughs> can you give a rundown of all the bright places yes all the bright places is about a girl who learns to live from a boy who intends to die um, it's it's also about really being able to find the bright places around us and inside of us even in the darkest times and it's a really personal story you said last time we had the live show interview, you said you pulled from personal experiences with that. Mm -hmm. How was it, like, combining those those feelings that you had from that into the novel of, a, like, a fictional world? It was really, you know, it was really tough at first because it is so personal. I was, you know, not sure that I could write it. And um, I, I didn't really tell anyone I was going to work on it because I thought if it's really bad or I'm not able to do it, then I don't want anyone to know that I tried and failed. But I sat down and I started writing and automatically, like, Finch's voice came out very, very strong. And that just kind of told me that I'd been carrying this story around for a long time and I really needed to get it out. And so it came out very quickly. I wrote it in about six weeks, actually, the first draft. And I'm so glad I did. And it also proved to me that I could write something really personal. So then with Holding Up the Universe, how did you pull in personal experiences but also create another fictional story? I, you know, I, this one uh, is such a different story. And it's really, you know, that one's about, it's about a boy named Jack who has prosopagnosia, which is also known as face blindness. So he can't recognize anyone um, even his mom or his family members. And then a girl named Libby who used to be America's fattest teen and she hasn't been to school since fifth grade and now she's about to be a junior in high school. And the, the, they come together through this very like cruel high school prank and through it they really learn to find themselves and they learn a lot about um, just seeing people for who they really truly are and not judging. And I, I think that this one came from so many different areas in my life. It's also personal, but it's, it's whereas All the Bright Places was inspired by a boy I loved, this really came from my cousin who has prosopagnosia. He's 16, and I was, I'm so fascinated by how he sees the world. And then um, other family members who have it, and then also just weight struggles that I've had, that my friends have had. When I was 12 or 13, I was overweight and, and just knowing what that felt like, and then also um, the loss of my mother, which is something that I talk to, you know, I, I give to Libby in the book. And it's, so it, it comes from all these different places, but really it's just out of my heart. Yeah. So can you like, explain your process of how you went from writing this, well, they're both tough issue topics, mm -hmm. but you went from Finch and Violet into Libby and Jack. Jack. Yeah. It's, you know, that was really, it was really challenging because all the right places, you know, I wrote it in 2013, it came out, you know, in January of last year, and since I wrote it, I've been living in it. I've been out on the road promoting it, I've been talking about it all the time, the and the movie, I'm writing the script for it, and, which is oh, yeah. so How was that? It's awesome, it's so exciting, and I'm so lucky to be getting to do it, but it's, it was so challenging in the middle of all of that to switch to these two new characters. And as with All the Right Places, this one is told from the perspective of a boy and a girl, like dual narration. But I really had to get in their heads. And it was hard at first because Finch and Violet are very much in there and I live in that world. But I had to shift into this new world. 
And I think um, one thing that really helped me was creating playlists for both of the characters and then also for the story itself. So if I want to write Libby, I get into the Libby playlist if I want to write Jack, and they're very different playlists. So it's, I think that kind of helped. And then once I found their voices, it was easy to stay in there with them. I have a feeling you're really going to like this question. Is it supernatural related? Maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay, so if the characters from your books, like either one, either Libby, Jack, Finch, or Violet, mm-hmm. were to be placed into the world of supernatural, okay. what do you, do you think? How do you think their personalities would shift, and what do you, how do you think they would act? Oh my gosh, that is such a good question, and I am. Let me think about that. I think that you know, I think they'd all make excellent hunters in their own way. Um, I feel like. Um, Violet is a little like Sam, like she's very like, she would probably, you know, want to help him with research and things like that. Um, I feel like uh, Finch is pretty fearless, so I feel like he would be a really good hunter. Um, And I feel like, I feel like, um, I don't know, Libby's pretty fearless too. I feel like they would be really good hunters. I feel like that's what they would all be doing and they would all have their strengths in different ways and I could go on like for an hour about how I think because I love just picturing them in that world with Sam and Dean and Cass and Crowley. What if like one of them the characters from Supernatural the actors yeah were casted for all the right places what would your initial reaction be? So you're asking me if Jared Padalecki was cast in all the right places I'm sure that's who you were referring to like I would freak out I would freak out. I'd be like, you can play anyone you want. You can play... Violet? Violet. You can play Violet. You can play anyone. <laughs> well, I remember in the live show I said that I'm, that I'm going to be playing Boy in the Hallway number th- five. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've not forgotten that. <laughs> so what is your favorite experience of BEA in book Because you were here yesterday, right? Signing, yes. holding up I was, the universe? I got here actually on Wednesday. So I started Wednesday. Did you do anything exciting in Chicago? Uh, I have been here, which has been, and it's wonderful. And there's been no time to actually see Chicago, which is fine. I love Chicago, and I've been here a million times. This is what I really wanted to see. All the readers. Did you have have some deep dish pizza yet? I didn't. You know what? I can't eat gluten, and it kills me. Kills me. So sad. This is my favorite questions. Okay. This is called the lightning round. Some random questions. I have like about 10 random questions. I'm excited. So you're ready? Yes. Fried or grilled chicken? Grilled. Okay, I have a question, Jen, in a minute. Yes. As a writer, sometimes you outline things and sometimes you don't. Is there anything that you've ever written that you regret and wish you can change and what is it? Oh, that's a, a very question. good question. Thank you. Really it's a good question. You know, it's funny. I will, you know, I can look back at, at past books and I can see the growth in, you know, in me as a writer, which hopefully you have. And there are things I think now I wouldn't have written but within the books, but I would never change anything because it's what came out of me at the time. So I wrote as honestly at the time, and so I would never change anything. But I definitely, I outline a little, mm-hmm. but I also just kind of wing it a little. Um, I think you have to do both. Like, for me, I have to. Unless it's a really plot-driven book. I've had those before where you really have to make sure you hit every single yeah. thing. But I think of it like a road trip. Like, you know what you're, know where you want to end up, mm-hmm. and you know where you're starting. Mm-hmm. You may know a couple things along the way, but you have to be open all the detours. Yes. I love that. Oh, my gosh. I felt so special. Thank you for asking. Thank you for answering. Okay. Peanut butter, jelly, or peanut butter and jelly? Peanut butter. First word that comes to mind? First word that comes yeah. to mind. Lovely. Favorite word? Probably lovely. <laughs> yeah. Sour cream and onion or barbecue chips? Barbecue. What is your current jam? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I laugh because this morning I was listening to my Holding Up the Universe like playlist and... Um, dancing like all over the hotel room to Uptown Funk, which I know is like old, but I love it so much. Yeah. Um, binge-worthy shows. Oh, <laughs> Supernatural. Best fan experience thus far. Best fan experience? Oh my gosh. All of them. Every single one of them. They're just, they made me cry. Um, 
I, every single one. I, I think as a whole, I love it when people tell me how the book like really meant a person, like it's very personal to them and how they relate to it. And I love when they tell me like it helps save them. Mm-hmm. And that just means more than anything. And then we both cry. I think, I think I was at the Rochester Teen Book Festival, which I know was happening this weekend. I was there last year and I did a panel where someone raised her hand. She was very kind of nervous, but she said, I just want to tell you in front of everyone, like this book saved my life. And she started crying. And then this other girl raised her hand and she said, it saved my life too. And she started crying. And then everyone in the room, we had to get like tissue brought in and everyone was, and we were sharing. It was like this lovely, and they all stay in touch. And that just, that was just like the most amazing. Last question. When can everyone buy Holding Up the Universe? So glad you asked that. October 4th October. of this year. You heard that here. Uh, Say one more thing to Jennifer. <laughs> Happy birthday! Ah, yay! Thank you. This is the best birthday ever. Yeah. So, by the time this is up, it'll probably be like after her birthday because it's today, but right. make sure to follow her on Instagram at Jennifer Niven. And on Twitter at Jennifer Niven. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, I. Filming. Oh, I'm like, I was just like, what, what the heck is hoodoo? I'm like, always oh, holding up the universe. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to the behind the scenes where I belong. <laughs>